Welcome to Fiber Style Television. I am your host, Renaissance Austin, and here it's all about the fiber of life, from inward to outward beauty, crafting, nutritious eating, and of course, music. We can never forget about music. Today, we're gonna be talking about eyeshadow ideas, crocheting for beginners, different fiber types, and I'm gonna make a very simple salad for you, but it's one of my favorite salads. So stay tuned while we head over to the craft room for a lesson. When you're just starting out in crochet, you wanna keep everything very, very simple, even with buying your materials and also with your projects. You want to choose very basic beginner crochet or knit projects. So I'm gonna show you some of the materials and items that I have that you can go out and get before you start your very first project. The first thing you will need to get when you are getting your supplies for your crochet projects is just a simple pair of scissors. Um, these are by Crayola and they're for kids and they're pretty sharp and they're great for cutting yarn. Next, you wanna make sure that you get embroidery needles, okay? Size 18 to 22 is good, size 16, size 14. They're all really good. Um, this particular one was a promotional item that was given to me when I was teaching at Joann's. Um, I haven't exactly seen this on the shelf. Uh, I believe there, there should be some out now, but this is really nice to have them inside of this case because then you don't lose them. But just in case not, you can always get your old traditional pin cushion and you can also put your, stick your embroidery needles in there as well. Um, there are also plastic ones, which is, which are really good for kids, um, but they are flexible. So just keep in mind if your tension is a little bit too tight or if you're a little tense, which happens with your first project, um, these are breakable because they are flexible. I tend to like the aluminum or the metal ones because they're more sturdy and they really do get the job done. So now we can look at crochet hooks. There's a wide variety of them. Mainly, you're always gonna start off with your J or your K. Okay. But they do have a really nice set that comes with like the G, the I, and the H. It usually looks like this. It's about five crochet hooks. And it's like $7.99 to $9.99, um, depending on if you have a coupon or if it's on sale. And normally they carry these at Michael's or Joann's. But the, that starter set of crochet hooks with the, the G, um, the H, the I, the J, and the K, that's a really, really, really good starter kit for um, your beginning projects. When you start getting into other projects that deal with very, very small threads, then this is when you get into your um, really, really tiny <laughs> aluminum uh, metal crochet hooks. As you can see, they are really, really small. I actually started off doing um, crocheting with really, really small thread. <laughs> I love it. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. And then um, you can see I have a couple of large ones. This one here is um, an N, and this is the 15 millimeter, the Q. Um, there's L out there, they have S. Sometimes you have to really search for the large ones, but they're there. And so the large ones can be hard to work with sometimes for some people, but um, they're really good when you're working with chunky yarn or medium weight to chunky yarn. And then you have your afghan hook, which is um, has a knitting needle ending on the back, but then on the front, you have your crochet hook. And there are actual like afghan stitches that you can do, and you can do them in all kinds of different designs. And that's your afghan hook. When it comes to yarn, 
most of the time you're going to start with a very basic worsted weight yarn um, red heart is always usually good to start with because it's very firm um, they have a variety of colors it's 100 acrylic and um, it's very very easy to work with because normally um, the basic worsted weight yarns don't really split as you can see yarn comes in a plethora of colors um, color gradients softness weights design and uh, textures and also different fiber blends so let's just talk about this one this is actually one that I picked up from Big Lots and it is a very I mean this is smaller than sock weight yarn okay it's really 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 small it's great to knit with and crochet with. And it's just a blend of nylon, polyester, and acrylic. And here's another one that has a really, really nice gradient. It's also still really soft, but it is much um, heavier than the previous yarn. Here is another one. As you can see, is would be considered a novelty yarn so it's very very unique i would suggest that you only knit with this but you can also do other fun things with this as well so let's talk about a blend this one here is the alpaca natural blend so it's 70 percent acrylic and 30 percent alpaca so you'll find a lot of yarns that are blended with acrylic like most of the time acrylic and wool will be blended and the acrylic will be blended with all different types of wools there's various kinds of wools and so also another thing that you should be mindful of is when you purchase your yarn on the package it shows you um you know what size crochet hook you should use um, or a knitting needle and it just lets you know what the weight is the yardage it also lets you know here like the grams 3.5 ounce um, and also how to care for it and usually with the labels there's information like oftentimes there's a pattern inside the label and then also care instructions and um, it's usually in more than one language Another one of my favorites, I call it the buckle. And I love yarns that are made in Turkey. Turkey, um, they really make a lot of nice yarns. Like say for instance, this one here says, um, you know, 5.5 millimeter or a size I. I mean, I've used this and I don't think you should use anything smaller than an N <laughs> when you're using this. Um, I would even go, I would go as small as um, a K. I would use a K with this, but I wouldn't use anything smaller. This is also great to knit with, but with crocheting, when you try to um, pull it out, it's very, very difficult to pull out. So with time you will know how to use your yarns and your fibers and what's good for crocheting what's good for knitting uh, what's easy to work with and what is not so easy to work with this is a, a beautiful new color by red heart called shocking pink i love that it's just so shocking but this is beautiful so um, I love this color. Regular worsted weight yarn, usually cut. And cottons. Cottons come in a variety of weights as well. This is a turquoise cotton, 100% cotton. When it's wet, it can be very, very heavy. Um, but these are great for like uh, washcloths, placemats, um, making things for the summer, tunics, all kind of things like that. And you can see it comes in different weights. 
spun differently and also different qualities. Most of the time, the more you spend on fiber, the better quality it is normally. And again, cotton. I love the cones. If you try and get the cones to get them at a really, really reasonable price, you can make a lot of things from one cone. Again, you have the smaller thread. And, and this is also 100% cotton, smaller thread. And you're gonna use your really, really small crochet hooks. Normally the metal, the aluminum ones, the tiny ones you're gonna use with this. And again, here's another, very pretty, I love this. Very pretty specialty or novelty yarn. Again, it's very, very lightweight, but it uh, has a really, really nice gradient and it's designed beautifully. <laughs> I would suggest that you knit with this only, just my opinion. I would knit with this or I would use a very, very large crochet hook, a size Q, S, L, or N with this type of yarn. It's time for eyeshadow ideas. My foundation is already complete and I've already done one eye. Let's get started. I've already primed my eyes. Now I am ready to apply the eye color. I'm starting with turquoise first. And I'm just placing it where I want it to go. And right in this section here. Now I'm going to apply the gold in the inner eye. I'm just patting it on. Now I'm gonna switch brushes and I'm gonna apply my shadow. I want it to be a little catty, so I'll put create a little point. I'm gonna switch brushes again and I'm going to apply my highlighter right under the arch. I'm just gonna sweep it all the way out. I'm gonna come down. Now I'm just gonna blend everything with the same brush and just sweep over lightly. So we're gonna take a violet eyeshadow, something very plum, something dark. It just makes the base different than a black base. And I'm gonna apply to my eyebrows. I'm using a rounded liner brush because I want it to be very soft, I want it to be blended. I'm gonna reinforce that inner eye. Now we're just gonna take our concealer brush a little bit of concealer or powder, whatever you like, and we're just gonna clean up around the eyes. And this is today's eyeshadow idea. We all know that crafting and creating projects can make you very hungry. So since it's time for lunch, I'm gonna create for you guys, one of my favorite salads. It's a very simple salad, but it's so yummy. And with minimal ingredients, but it's just really, really tasty. So here's what I'm using to make the salad. I'm just using a Sorrento Baby Arugula blend. I just love this. And you guys, I am so in love with arugula right now. I just love the very 
uh, grassy <laughs> taste that it has. But this uh, mix has the baby arugula and the spinach and the baby lettuces. So I'm using that for my salad, just a little bit of um, olive oil spray. And we're gonna use some Parmesan and Romano cheese, pepper, and olive tempanade. Oh, I just love this. This is what really makes the salad so good. So before I um, put my lettuce in the bowl, I'm gonna layer my olive oil. I'm gonna spray the inside of the bowl first. And I'm just gonna start putting my lettuce in. And I like to break it up a little bit. My dad was a chef in the Navy for nine years. And he taught me how to make a salad when I was like nine or 10. And from that point, I've always been the salad girl. Anytime we would do things with family or we do a potluck, I would always make the salad. <laughs> so I never forgot that. He always taught me to make sure that, you know, I broke my lettuce up in small, small pieces because that was the way you were to make a more gourmet style salad. Smaller pieces. I'm gonna take a little bit more olive oil. And I'm just gonna spray that. And I'm gonna add some more additional layers. So now for the cucumber, I usually just get an English cucumber and I cut off about that much the rest to the side. I always leave the plastic on when I cut it. <laughs> I cut it in half and then that opens it up and I just cut it right on the plastic. I love the English cucumbers a lot. Okay, so now, I'm just gonna place it into the bowl. And those are my cucumbers. I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil. And now we're gonna spray the top layer. And that's gonna be all for the olive oil. Now for a little bit of pepper. I like a lot of pepper. Then Parmesan and Romano cheese. You guys, I love this blend. I actually do not put, you know, like store-bought salad dressing on my salads at all. I usually make my own. Now for the olive tipinade. Mm. So good. This also has olive oil in it, so it helps to coat the salad really nicely. So now I'm gonna mix my salad up. And this is our very simple but healthy salad. Thank you so much for watching Fiber Style Television. I am your host, Renaissance Austin. And while I enjoy my yummy salad, please enjoy new music by yours truly. And I'll see you next time. God bless. Look back and can't be near.